because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. So, I I kind of wanted to start off yeah, yeah, sharing go right a, a parable, and I may or may not have shared it before, but it just came up and I felt really inspired to share it. And um, yeah, so I've I've been living in this community for about a year and a half, but right before I came in, I went to one of my first retreats, and it was a silent retreat here at the monastery. I remember that, yeah. And that was after a time of where I really told the Holy Spirit, like, I give you my full yes, I'm going to follow you, I'm going to follow your guidance. Uh, and I just, you know, I gave everything up after seeing the futility of it. And so I was just following the guidance and it felt really good. And then, um, yeah, one day I was strongly guided to go to a silent retreat at the monastery. And, and yeah, so I went and it was like three days right before it started. and. And actually, just to backtrack real quick, I had been reading the course for like a couple of years at that point, but I remember I was reading it right before that retreat or, yeah. And then, you know, it's, there's, it says love, love, love all over the course, but I had this realization that, oh, wow, I actually, like, I actually don't know what love is. Like, I really mm-hmm. have no idea, like, what it is. And then I just had that realization in my mind. And then I went to the silent retreat and yeah, it was very, very intense. It was only six days, but the first three days were very intense and it felt like something was like building up in my mind or something like a lot of darkness was starting to build up and felt like a really bad headache or something. Yeah. I had this headache and I felt like I was getting sick and um, yeah. And I remember one night, uh, so all the sessions were voluntary. But then one night there was, it said on the board, a healing touch session. And that was the (laughs) night where I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll just skip that one. It just sounds a little too, you know, touchy feely. It's like, maybe that's not my kind of thing. (laughs) And then, but I still felt to go. So I was like, okay, let's give those thoughts over. And I'm just going to go and just see what happens. And yeah, it was like, everything was really building up at that point. Seemed like so much stuff was built up and uh and yeah so the healing touch basically it's like there's two groups one sits in the chairs and then another group the b group they stand behind the people in the chairs and then there's some nice music that plays and Mm. basically it's like the ones that are sitting in the chairs they're receiving love Mm. and then the ones that are standing up behind are extending love they're giving love and in the form that could look like, you know, just a massage in the upper back or like, you know, head rubs or whatever it looks mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. And I just remember I, I started off with the giving love, but I felt like I was so blocked that nothing was really happening. It was hard for me. And then we switched and we went to the receiving and then I was sitting in a chair and I just remember I was praying so hard. I was like, like, please spirit holy spirit help me like help me heal this and i was just like the whole time i was just praying help 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 like over and over and over and over and then different people you know the ones that are giving love they would rotate Mm. and then and then yeah i was just praying so hard and then this song came on uh shana knoll like you can relax now you can relax yeah and i was just like (laughs) you can relax now i don't remember the rest but yeah so that was just going on and and then the person behind me we don't know who it is because our eyes are closed but the person behind me just felt like they were really putting all their love into it and so passionate (laughs) and i was like wow i can really feel the love and then the song you can relax now and then 
I was just praying like, help, 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 help. And then, yeah, all of a sudden I just got this, this vision and where I was, you know, the, the sleeping son of God. And I was just like lying down or something. And then God was kind of whispering in my ear, like, you can relax now. And then all of a sudden something just like, like popped or, or melted. And, mm. you know, I almost never cried in this lifetime seemingly. And then that, in that moment, I just had so many tears just pouring down and, and just the experience was like, it was like, wow. Like I got a glimpse of like what love actually is there. Mm. And and I think, you know, that realization was so helpful before really telling myself, like, I actually have no idea what this is. Yeah, didn't you, you express something, like, the next day about, like, until this moment. Yeah, yeah maybe well, can... it was right after the session ended. Cause oh, I had okay. that. Yeah, I had that re- release, and I was like, whoa. And then, um, and then the session ended very shortly after that. And Kirsten was facilitating the session and she kind of said, does anyone have uh, anything they want to share, any experiences or anything? And that release was like so profound, so powerful for me that I just kind of, I jumped up and I was like, yes, me. And I just felt like (laughs) in that, yeah, I, I felt like I had no fear at all in my mind in that moment. Like there was nothing, no scraps of fear at all. I just felt like, limitless i felt like absolutely fearless it's just amazing and i grabbed up i was like yes me and i took the mic and yeah it was such a profound insight a realization because i i just told everyone i was like i just feel like my entire life i've been dead until this moment and like you could yeah i just felt like my whole life i had been like sleepwalking or i was dead (laughs) or like you know in a coma and I finally like felt alive after experiencing that that love. And then and then because of that I realized like wow, it's like what I'm what I what I'm really scared of, like what I thought I was so scared of is this. It was like I was like, wow, I can't believe it. Like it just blew my mind. It was like this is what I've been scared of mm. this whole time. This amazing, you know, you can't even like really t- even talk about it, put it into words, but this is what I was so scared of this whole time. Mm. It's like, this was my deepest fear. And it was like, and then I had this thought. So it's like, okay, so if this is what I'm really scared of, then I don't have to like hold back. You know, mm. it's like, I can go for this if what I'm scared of is this beauty, this beauty. Mm. So that was just so profound. Yeah. It's almost like this paradox. It's like, you know, it's, I was afraid of love this whole time. And yet actually that is like the deepest fear. It's, it's so it's, it's underneath it all. I think there's even a section that, um, yeah, when we were just in prayer, like that we found from a course in miracles that just, kind of says it all i mean do you feel maybe to share about it now yeah it's a fear of redemption and i think a link will be in the chat below but it is chapter 13 section 3 and i probably won't read the whole thing but to start off in the first paragraph yeah so yeah this is fear the fear of redemption says Mm. You may wonder why it is so crucial that you look upon your hatred and realize its full extent. You may also think that it would be easy enough for the Holy Spirit to show it to you and to dispel it without the need for you to raise it to awareness yourself. Yet there is one more obstacle you have interposed between yourself and the atonement. We have said that no one will countenance fear if he recognizes it. Yet in your disordered state of mind, you are not afraid of fear. You do not like it, but it is not your desire to attack that really frightens you. You are not seriously disturbed by your hostility. You keep it hidden because you are more afraid of what it covers. You could look even upon the ego's darkest cornerstone without fear if you did not believe that 
without the ego, you would find within yourself something you fear even more. You are not really afraid of crucifixion. Your real terror is of redemption. And then maybe a little more of the second paragraph. It says, Mm. under the ego's dark foundation is the memory of God. And it is of this that you are really afraid. For this memory would instantly restore you to your proper place. And it is this place that you have sought to leave. Your fear of attack is nothing compared to your fear of love. You would be willing to look even upon your savage wish to kill God's son if you did not believe that it saves you from love. For this wish caused a separation, and you have protected it because you do not want the separation healed. You realize that by removing the dark cloud that obscures it, your love for your father would impel you to answer his call and leap into heaven. You believe that attack is salvation because it would prevent you from this. For still deeper than the ego's foundation, and much stronger than it will ever be, is your intense and burning love of God and His for you. This is what you really want to hide. <laughs> yeah. My eyes are getting watery too. <laughs> Feel it. <sighs> yeah, but it's a relief to know that. You know, there might be this fear, but it's like all the course says we really need to do is just to allow it to come up and release it and mm-hmm. to look upon it. And then we'll see that it just dissolves. I think David was even saying the unconscious mind, uh, the Course refers to it as the unwatched mind. Yeah. It's just, it seems so dark and unconscious and full of fear and and darkness only because it's like, it's hidden, it's not looked at. Mm. So it's like, you're afraid of what you think isn't there, actually. Yeah, That's why, you know, it's like a lot of children are afraid of the dark. It's like, you go, to, you go to your basement of your parents' house and you're like, hurry, turn the lights off. But oh, there's like I used nothing. to sprint up the stairs. <laughs> That's totally that. <laughs> but actually, there was a certain point in time where I just, I had this thought like, I don't know, I, you know, I grew up actually watching so many horror movies <laughs> with my sister and all these things. And I remember seeing Chucky, you know, like the killer doll and all these things. And so I had all this fear of the basement. And actually, the basement, the, one of the houses I lived in it just it was like damp and all this stuff it just was really reflecting where my fear was and, and I remember at one point I just felt like this is ridiculous like I'm always like afraid of this. so again I just I felt like yeah something just switched in my mind of just like you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be there yeah. it's gonna be there and and then it actually seemed like it was more out of nowhere where I I like, I don't know. I like stopped thinking about it. it. Like stopped being a thing I was even afraid of. I I actually forget the whole, like what healing must have happened in my mind, but it just stopped being a thing. You know, I started to realize actually it was, yeah, I think even just at a slight level, uh, maybe I started reading the course or something. I started seeing that actually what I was really afraid of, it seemed, uh, wasn't so much the out picturing, but was more this inward fear and darkness. I like didn't want to look at that. And so of course I started projecting it out there. And as soon as I started being more willing to look within, it's like the world stops being actually this fearful place. Cause you see it was always more this mm. thing you weren't facing on the inside that you were afraid of. And, and actually beneath all that, like, like Jesus was saying right in, in that section, you could look upon like the ego's darkest cornerstone. If, if there wasn't this thought that like you would look upon that, love underneath it all like you're really afraid of god love you know oneness that's truly what it is because there is no you in that you know there's like there's a total merge there's and actually you know that's that is terrifying (laughs) because it's it's a it's like the deepest like death there is death of the body is one thing you know 
but it's actually like what we're really afraid of is losing who we think we are. Like there's even that section, I think it's maybe self-concept versus self in the back of the text. It's like, yeah, I, I can't remember the exact words of it, but it was like the, um, you know, the thing that the world is most afraid to hear is like, I do not know the thing I am, like who I am or where I am or what I'm supposed to do. And yet, totally paraphrasing here, but uh, yet in this is salvation born because it's like only in that empty place can you actually be shown that I know mine is, is always kind of in that way. It's like, oh, I know what I'm afraid of. You know, I know how to heal myself. I know. It's like, no, it's like we got to step back. We have to step out of the way and actually allow ourselves to be shown how to heal, you know, what to heal. You know, I'd have all these like, I remember just at certain times, that, like at one point when um, I was back in Maryland and, and I was like, man, the special relationship thing is like so intense in my mind. Like I want to heal it. I'm going to heal. I'm just going to watch all the movies on special relationship, do all the thing like on MMT, mystical mind. I'm just, I'm going to heal this. And it, it's like, Jesus is laughing in the background. It's like, you have no idea actually how to heal. You don't actually know what the problem is. You know, you think you need to do this and that, but actually, you know, even simpler than it all, you just need to get swept up in the joy and allow everything else to like fade from your mind. You need to be swept up in purpose and service to me. And that's actually going to be the answer that pulls you out following my guidance. You know, you think you have to heal yourself, but actually we cannot heal ourselves. We can only allow ourselves to be healed, you know, to be awakened. It's like, that was a big switching point for me. And, you know, it's like, we don't know how to heal this fear of love or this fear of redemption. And, you know, the answer is like guidance is yeah. step-by-step service. Yeah. And that includes letting the Holy Spirit, you know, use your voice. Yeah, That's why we talk about, you know, no people pleasing, no private thoughts, but it's like, if you, you know, it's, it's no private thoughts because if you keep private thoughts, then you're maintaining the unconscious mind. So it's like even letting the Holy Spirit, like help you expose whatever you need to expose. Um, you know, with a trusted mighty companion who knows the purpose. But yeah, there's a fear of communication as well. And yeah, I feel like just by moving towards true communication, then that can release the fear um, and start to expose that unconscious mind. Because, you know, it's like in the past, we never knew what communication was. Like no one really taught us like what's, what's truly communication. Right. You know, in high school or whatever, like with your friends, family, you might even talk different ways to different people, like using slang or, you know, it's like, hey, what's up, man? What's up, bro? You know, just <laughs> never don't hug, though. Don't don't hug me. Just, just, hug. just or if it's a hug, it's, or, it's real quick. Or, like, or like a little, a, little tap a fist or a pounder. Fist pump. <laughs> and then uh, and then it's like hey, what's up, man, bro? And then using all this like slang stuff, which I used to do To avoid a actually lot. Like, it's intimacy, fear, actually. It's like yeah. fear of love. Fear of, yeah. yeah, it's fear of like true communication. Being vulnerable, yeah. being transparent. Yeah. Letting the Holy Spirit truly like use your words in your mouth. So, yeah, and I feel like <laughs> communication is really important like in relationships as well. <laughs> it's like if, you, if, if you're in a if you're in some kind of relationship then it's like you have to communicate like everything you're feeling especially well more specifically it's the the thoughts that you would keep hidden from your brother that need to be exposed because again we don't want to maintain that unconscious mind and maintain that fear so it's like why else wouldn't you say something to someone unless you were afraid that the thought is actually real and has power, but it's only when you actually expose something that you'll see that actually it has no power, that it truly is a meaningless thought. Until then we can practice, oh, my thoughts are meaningless, my thoughts are meaningless, and then, but it's like, but I won't say this thought. Right. But my thoughts are meaningless, so I don't have to say it. It's all illusion, there's no problem. You know, it's like, (laughs) my thoughts are meaningless, so why should I say it? But then it's like, I don't wanna say it, so why don't you wanna say it if it's meaningless? But of course, you're not going to go around, you know, I said this before, but you're not going to go to the grocery store and go to each person and be like, hey, I think uh, 
I don't like your hair, your clothes. Uh, I don't think you're very attractive. Like, say you're not gonna just say all mm. your thoughts to everyone, you know. So, you, well, the reason behind that is really because, like, the reason we even say the private thoughts is there's a desire, there's a prayer actually underneath that for connection. I want to feel totally connected with my brother. I want to feel there, and so from there, there's like this. There, yeah, that's the prayer. There's then a sense of discernment from. From there. So it's like if there's a trusted mighty companion and there's seems to be that block, you might actually reveal some of these private thoughts. You know, you might say some of these things. But if you're at a grocery store and you really want to connect, it's 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 pretty doubtful, although you know, I can't really sum up the whole entirety yeah. of what could happen, but it's pretty doubtful you would say that in order to connect with them, because there's not even that shared necessarily purpose with them. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's about the purpose because you're not just saying things to project all your stuff. <laughs> right. you're, you're saying it with a purpose of forgiveness, with an intention to actually release whatever you're about to expose. That's why it's important that both parties have in mind that purpose before you start just exposing everything. And, you know, a lot of people might ask, well, I don't have someone that understands the course or is it even in mind training or, you know, what do I do then? It's like, well, put a prayer out because the Holy Spirit answers prayer. So it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, if it's for my own, if it's in my own best interest, please send me like a mighty companion that I can express with to each other mm. all, my, all my thoughts. And, and yeah, just see what happens and just trust that if it doesn't come in, it's not what you need right now. You know, mm. it might just be, it might just be holding the space for like family or friends that they'll say a lot of stuff and it's like, okay, I just have to wash my mind, give the thoughts over to the Holy Spirit. And then if you need a mighty companion to then start expressing to each other, then just put that prayer out and someone will show up. It doesn't even have to be in person. You guys could all connect with each other. Uh, you know, send contacts. Yeah. We, we on. talked on Skype for a, yeah. for a while when I was out in Quebec, Canada and you were in Maryland. Uh, you were my mighty companion. It was these calls like every day. But, um, I was actually just right. You were talking about prayer, and I was like, "Yeah, you you've had some big prayers recently, and I think so." <laughs> I don't know if you feel to share. I could share my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could share actually. I I don't know. I guess my view on relationships just keeps um, evolving, so yeah. to speak. And this the first line that I read. Oh well, it's gone now, but. <laughs> it was uh you know it said you have to see the full extent of your own self-hatred in order for you to let it go and what happened was uh i don't know even where the thought oh yeah i remember where the thought came from i yeah so basically i was um i'm at the monastery most of this month for the tabula tabula rasa mystery school and uh yeah i had a little bit of fear before going there because of past associations like before I would go to the monastery and I would be working with certain people that you know I wasn't exposing my private thoughts with and all these judgments and resentments would build up and then I had a terrible experience well of course because I'm not expressing the right. private thoughts it's like so it had nothing to do with the monastery or those people it, you just have to be in full communication allow the Holy Spirit to really use your voice and express all your private thoughts mm. and so Basically, on the car ride up there, it was uh, me, uh, Jessica, and Marie, and we were just talking a lot about um, exposing private thoughts. And so I was like, okay, yeah, that's th th there's a big theme right there in the mind. And so I just told myself, okay, I know the way out of this fear that I feel right now going to the monastery is when I go there, I need to expose my thoughts with anyone that I don't feel connection, especially if they're like a um, a given assignment or link you know we we use these words sometimes link basically means you know you're in a collaboration with someone on a different project like let's say at the monastery i'll be linked with uh jane marie you know emily and a few others and i just yeah i had in mind i have to i have to express like if i don't feel connected with someone if i have judgments whatever it might be i have to do that because that's the only way out of this fear and into true communication and to have a clear mind so yeah, I did that and it felt so good. I was like, wow, I'm like invincible if I can just do this in any seeming situation that the Holy Spirit brings me to when mm. it's guided, of course, not grocery store kind of stuff. Right. But 
Yeah, so I was so inspired by that. I was like, wow, every time I have a project or assignment, I'm just going to go make sure I feel connected and as best as I can and then expose whatever is blocking that connection so I can feel free and like vulnerable again. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't have to pretend like, oh, it's the, the monasteries just, you know, monasteries are starting away. It has nothing to do with the location. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's a state of mind. And because of that experience, I then thought to myself one night, I was like, the only reason I want a relationship is if it can allow me to uncover the full extent of my own self-hatred and, and that, that relationship, that person could hold that space so that I can then express everything I need to in order to also release that. Like it would be like a safe space. <laughs> and then I even said like, I don't even care what they look like. <laughs> and I, that really like, you know, that blew my mind because I thought preferences, whatever, but it's like, no, it's like, it keeps evolving. It's like, what mm. I really want yeah. is to like, you know, let's get this unconscious mind to the surface. You know, let's, let's have the love of God pour in like fully. Yeah. You're always leading the way with these powerful, huge prayers. <laughs> Like, yeah, Andy, go for it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you just, yeah, with these prayers, you're always going for it. I forget some of your other big prayers, but they've always been like that. And I know for me, I, yeah, there's not a whole lot of time, so maybe I actually won't go, maybe it's for another episode, some, some of what I was feeling to potentially share, but there was this prayer of wanting to, let's see. <laughs> What's most inspiring? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't actually feel like there's enough time right now, so maybe it's another episode where I go well, into a nice cliffhanger, yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> to stay tuned to next week's episode of Modern Mystics to hear the mystery right. surprise that Nicholas wants to share. Yeah, it's a big miracle, but it's yeah, it, it feels too tight. Can't really share the miracle of it all, but <sighs> yeah. Well maybe Maybe next week we'll go deeper into relationships and right. <laughs> miracles. And, and yeah. Hmm. Do you want to end it here or any last? Yeah, I kind of went blank. That was kind of the next thing, but yeah. okay. I might have to just end oh, it yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep the suspense, keep the excitement. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned next week at 945 Mountain Standard Time, right? Mountain Daylight Time on Sunday. Mountain we'll Daylight Time. Then. Yeah, and so, yeah, then we have a full day of shows. So stay tuned on Zoom today. Just, I think, Divine Intervention with Ken and Anna. And then we've got the last step with Jeffrey and Frank. And then we've got uh, Jason, which I, I think mean, I'm assuming he's... Be on show, I, so. It's going to be amazing as always. So. Yeah, so thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Andy, for yeah, just uh, everything you, you shared. That was powerful. Yeah.